Hey, it's me, Junipery, 1000%. And I love you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I also do ASMR music, singing and dancing, and also some vlogs. <laughs> Just check them out if you like. You can also follow me on socials if you like as well. Yeah, just how do you make friends with your worries? This is one, two, three, four. Let's get going. So, pile number one. Let's see. Ooh. Getting the sense that you're someone who's very emotional but also wants to be somewhat in control, actually. I'm seeing that your worries, or you, you like to like, spin webs in a way. I connect with a lot of people but also you like to try to connect the dots also maybe some of you like to lie which is not a good thing because that will end up snowballing and you end up it will end up just crashing it's just and by lying you also attract other people who are liars so law of karma <laughs> anyway also with other people maybe with your worries that is they might be they might be lying to you funny as is it could be that you're overthinking or it could be that you're going over all your worries so much through the finest details like a spider on the web that you're forgetting the bigger picture I'm also getting the feeling that there's this quote about no matter how much the spider spins to the moon, he can never catch the moon. So maybe there's something that you want to obtain and you're trying to plan your way to it. But maybe the best way for you to get to where you want to be is to like, follow the moon, follow the moon's guidance or like, the moon cycles, especially since it's, like, it's Leo and then it's almost Pisces new moon just about Pisces is a lot about illusions and wanting to break free from illusions for some people that is also with Pisces it is a lot about art, poetry, music just your craft as well and also maybe you might be thinking a lot about your craft which is what I'm getting as well 14 something about something dying and then happening again in a much more positive way I'm seeing um oh my gosh I actually saw this card in my mind because this is number 14 and this is also number 14 so num number 14 to me is about so one is about leadership and four is about stability about you leading your own stability kind of like a spider with Especially I'm thinking of like a redback spider or a spider who carries their eggs on their backs or something like that. Basically you through your own leadership, you weave your own reality and you weave your own stability so you build your own house using your crafts and talents like the spider. And also this card is a lot about Sagittarius energy, Jupiter energy, a lot of good luck especially. And I'm very much drawn to this. So I'm guessing that's also like well, how I got the moon thing, maybe. Because this is a lot to do with fire. And since um, like the Leo full moon is like a fire full moon. So it's a lot about you wanting to reach your goals and fulfilling them. Yeah, fulfilling your goals. That is also what new full moons are about. And new moons with a new moon in Pisces coming around. It's very much, it is more... So do take in mind that I'm filming this during what day is it? The twentieth, the twentieth of February. 
So with the Pisces new moon, it is a lot about new beginnings, new discoveries about your talents and healing, which is your creativity in general, like a new beginning, a new project, some kind of revelation about the kind of creative project that you've always wanted to do and finally this time would be the right time for you to take on this action because you have this Jupiter energy which tells you that you are very much in luck and you're very expansive in your creativity I guess. And you know and maybe you will bring me some finance as well. So on to this one. So so this is number five so one plus four is five. Oh my gosh my maths wait did, was i going to say anything else oh yeah seahorses as well can you like bring it down or something being responsible about your finances maybe some of you are parents and No, some of you might, just for a small fraction of you maybe, you're wondering if you can take the time out to pursue your creative stuff. Or maybe you are already in the creative field and wondering if what you can do to maximize your income for your children. I'm good with this is that, to me this one also talks about marriage as well. So maybe for some of you, you're concerned about your marriage. Or you're wondering how you should weave your way to marriage or to a successful marriage. But with this card, it is like... So how I got the marriage thing is that... So you're losing the three... This is why like your parents... You, so like three people, traditionally. And you go into the marriage which is more of a partnership of two people at this moment. Also, would the universe would like you to know that all the past opportunities that you buy you, they were not meant for you. So, it is actually very fortunate for you to miss out. Believe it or not, because once you have narrowed down to these two, like two opportunities, two creative projects, those kinds of things, by narrowing it down, it really will help you expand in those two areas. For some of you, you might feel like you've lost some connections. Maybe because, maybe you wanted to try to talk to them, but they just found you annoying. Or maybe, you know, I think that's the case. Most people. 23, it also adds up to five. So five is all about change. A change in stability. It's like, Ooh, it's more like when you've reached a certain point of stability and you realize that you want something different so you kind of turn it around turn it into the five so from the stable four to the five which is all about change especially about changing the sense of like a turning of fate kind of thing so with this card it is a lot about like other people oh look it's three people and three so maybe there are three particular parties, three people, or for a small fraction of you, three, three circumstances, three situations that are really nagging on you, and I feel like they're really taking very much of your resources, like they're taking your cheese, when you are really trying to save it up for yourself, for the long winter, or I heard that. I also hear a lot that they are, because this is yellow and it's all about the solar plexus to me, so they might be gnawing on your self-confidence. And the full moon in the year was all about being confident in yourself, believing, having faith in yourself, even if nobody else does. But I definitely have faith in you, okay? Um, and also I'm seeing like these hearts, it's so, like with a heart chakra of being green, I'm like, you might actually really like these three people, but what the universe wants you to know is for to have all these emotions, this water contained in for yourself, for your own heart. I just realized it's kind of 
for your own heart, for your own well-being, for your own green water bottle, instead of giving it to these three people, three parties, three situations who are not serving you properly. So it is a lot about, oh, let's get to this, heart of the moment. It is about following your impulses. And also the red is like the sacral chakra, which is red. <laughs> and so that is, again, ties with the number four. And what number is this red? It's 16, so 7. Oh, it's also about you leading 3? 6 is a very spiritual number. It's also about passions. Like what I said about, oh, red as well. What I said about you perfecting your craft, like the spider. So it's like you changing your perspective with the number 5 and then going on to pursue your passion with the number 6. And then that leading up to number seven which is about teaching other people so through pursuing your own craft you can teach other people it's like this just reminds me of dance i guess it's like learning about dance and then easily teaching other people about dance how to dance how to be in the moment so dancing might be a really good thing for you because it's all about being in the present in the moment even if it is just to the beat which is still in the moment and see, I see this kind of separation. Maybe there is some kind of twin flame connection also with the twos. But I'm guessing that for some of you, it is very much about not worrying about what the other people might think of you, whether they think that you're annoying or whether they've been annoying you, just letting them go, basically. And being in the moment, following your impulses of basically going with your flow. If you suddenly feel like drawing, do it. If you suddenly feel like dancing, even if you don't want to dance in public, you can just go into a cubicle even and just randomly dance like that. I've done that before actually. <laughs> or if you want to dance in public, it is so public. And also if you feel like crying, I cry in the public all the time too. So it's very refreshing. Especially when you realise other people just like wanting to contain their emotions. It's very fun to watch their reactions or their non-reactions trying to avoid making eye contact with you when you're crying and you're like <laughs> Since I'm also kind of prankish in a way. Mm. Basically, this is all a lot about your heart. No, yeah, this is very much pointing to this as well. Balancing your own emotions, sort of with the two and the two. So maybe communicating with somebody maybe who is twin flame to you. Yeah, maybe connecting with them more, talking to them more. And learning from them more because twin flames reflect things that we don't want to see in ourselves. Sometimes they're good things, sometimes they're bad things, sometimes they're really in between things. Good things are things like bad things, bad things that are actually good things. So really come to love yourself, even your shadow. And your shadow is really good. It might not be what people think suit into this modern day society. So yeah, it's very much about following your heart, your passion. One distant shore. So yeah, it's also about disconnecting with the people you have right now. And also I'm hearing for some of you, most of you, meditation. Meditation, even astral projection to get you into a very quiet space where you can just be in the island of yourself. And also getting that we know that you are protected in this journey. Like make sure you protect yourself in this right light. Just know that, just close your eyes and see with your eye, your mind's eye, according to Hamlet, and this white light around you. And know that it is protecting you, it is like an umbrella sheltering you, sheltering you. And also I'm hearing for some of you come out of your shell, if the people around you, you feel like you can't be yourself around them, step away from them for a bit. Go to a distant shore, go find somebody else. Also, this talks to you a lot about your intuition. So following where you intuitively want to go, also the heart of the moment, also ties into that. And following your heart, of course. Um, it's also just don't be afraid of your emotions. Being like the king of water, who knows how to handle his own emotions and to go with it and to pick up how other people are feeling and to know when you should be leaving them alone so that they can go on their own journey and to know that they are protected in their own journeys as well 
also back to the twin flame energy I was picking up with this. So maybe your twin flame is somewhere in a distant land, so like overseas somewhere, and it is important for you to maybe just connect with them, even on an intuitive level, which is of course what twin flames normally do. And yeah, talk to them if you like. I do get the sense that they will take you to distant shores, like they will help you understand things from a different perspective, from an outsider's point of view. And so basically communication, communicating your emotions is very important for you, power number one. And also just leaving the people who annoy you. Oh my gosh, I didn't swear in this pile. I'm so proud of myself. So yeah, that's all I have. Subscribe if you like, subscribe if you haven't. And yes, also follow me on social media if you like, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, generally that. Also, I have mine as well. And feel free to message me or just comment if you want to say anything, leave anything. I love you very much. Just keep that in mind. And I have faith in you. So good girl. Love you. See you soon. Okay, up to... Oh, me. Oh, now it is time for pile number two. Yes. So what I'm seeing with this is that one, the number one is a lot about leadership. Like I said before as well. It's about leadership and just being true to yourself. It's just being a singular you, being okay with being alone. And children, they're actually, to me, children are quite okay with being alone. They can find joy in pretty much everything. They really never feel alone because they know that the people who believe in them, who love them, are always really, their hearts are with them. I guess the animals, the wildlife are with them, the trees, the plants. The universe is with them, and the universe is within them. And so I think the universe will like you to be more playful, not be afraid to just be within yourself. And this card is also a lot about communication, communicating with yourself with the yellow, I mean, what's the word? <laughs> blue, oh my gosh, starting to become colorblind, um, and the purple. So following your intuition, talking to yourself, your inner child. So a lot about also exploring your inner childhood memories as well. Also, I mean, I mean, do I really want to flip this out right now? The devil in reverse. That is number six. No, it's fifteen. Or fifteen. Which has to be number six. So the devil in reverse tells me to a lot about just release it, just let go of it, just just try to let go of what I'm hearing, and also. Don't be afraid to delve deep within your childhood, within also for some of the very childhood trauma, which I also went through. And um, not only childhood trauma, but also your shadow side, your darkest desires. Also, hearing that really like your darkest desires really link into your playful side, your childhood side, where everything is just of equal value I'm hearing, equal importance. It's like, maybe for some of you even some kind of murderous thoughts. But, especially when people say that in your childhood, if you ever felt like doing something mean to animals, it means that there's something, it means that somebody has really wronged you as a child. Maybe you felt like you were abandoned, and then after you were abandoned, you felt like you were very much tied to some kind of social structure, legal structure. Felt like nobody was looking after you and so you had to turn to the dark side of hearing. So I'm seeing this woman come out. Strangely that it'll, this card will come out. 29. I'm hearing for some of you some kind of negative witchcraft that may have happened. Also, this part of the least cards, which I do think that the universe wants you to say, just simplify your way of thinking. Really, for the devil card as well, it's like you feel like you're trapped, but really you can see that these people they can just take off the chains very easily, apparently. And also there was a time when I was very seriously working with the devil card because I felt like I was very much trapped. Like something was luring me. Also I'm getting like the mother and child dynamic as well. So maybe your mother did something that you felt like she shouldn't have done. But also maybe someone 
feels like some woman has cast this kind of spell on you and is very and you're trying to struggle to get out of it. Which is very interesting. And also strangely, there was also a time when I felt like somebody cast a spell on me. Like a love spell actually. And that was very annoying. And through and basically it wasn't through cutting cords that got me out of it. It was about pulling out the the cord. Strangely, there's a lot of dark colors in these two. That's why I have this card. Also, it is very important for you to know who you are. And by doing, I know who you are by connecting with your inner child. And you connect with your inner child by being playful, even if it is just, say, being in your own room and just dancing in front of the mirror, that kind of thing. And not worrying too much about how other people perceive you with a mirror behind you by turning turning your back on how other people see you, how other people reflect, how other people project things onto you. I'm also getting the sense with some parents I read. Oh my god, I don't even remember the book, name of the book, but it was like about parenting. I read this when I was in high school. <laughs> because I wanted to know how parents can shape me. And so, with some parents, they tend to project themselves onto their children. And so maybe that is what your mother did to you. Or just like a sibling did that to you. And that is why you feel like you are trapped in being like them. And so, by returning back to your childhood, you will really know. It's just like 333. Three, three. I'm hearing spin free, something about drawing, or like just writing. It's like calligraphy, I'm hearing. Through that. I feel like you can really reach into your inner depth and also this is God speaks right yeah so basically by connecting with also I'm hearing if you believe in a religion or even if you don't just read some some poetry some books some books about psychology maybe about your childhood and that through that they can speak to you it's also hearing like 3-3 three, three, because it is very much a mirroring kind of thing. It's again still that somebody projected something onto you. Also, about a lot about going in circles. I feel like because this adds up to 8, right? And 3-3 three, three is like two halves of the 8. So it's feeling incomplete and feeling like you're chasing something to complete yourself. When really inside you, you complete yourself already. And I really do believe you can do this. Even though it means a lot of work. So with the pulling of the cords, just like imagine yourself with a cord attached to someone or to anywhere. It's like imagining yourself pulling it out. And as you're pulling it out, you might see like some blood and stuff. But really try to heal it with like some white light. Or just imagine so this is like a cord being pulled out. So like Within you, it is white light, and you're just pulling this darkness outside of you. And also, this could be like the devil energy. But also, I'm hearing that it is much better to pull it out after you've explored your shadow side, or and like also looked into your childhood, and then just pull it out. And also, there is another thing where you can see see how you might have wanted your childhood to be, and also realize that. The reason why you went through all of this was so that you can teach other people. Like, by you detaching, also I'm getting the ripple effect, by you coming out of this, you can really influence your friends and even family members to see things from a different perspective and to detach from the projections other people, society, media projected onto them. So yeah, I think that's all. Yeah, I really believe in you guys. You guys are amazing. Like, because I also went through this as well. Thank you so much for listening. And subscribe if you haven't. If you like them. Just subscribe. <laughs> and also follow me on socials if you like. Instagram, Twitter. And like, comment. Make sure. And also if you like, um... You know, follow me on Spotify. Like, comment as well. Feel free to message me if you want. Just give me feedback and stuff. I love you guys. I love you. Amen.
Right, right, right. Now to pile number three. Let me tell you pile number three. When I was shuffling these cards, so many cards seem to be popping up. And I kept getting the sense that this might be kind of very complicated for me. And also, yeah. Number four, stability. You're trying to hold some sense of anything like mental stability. It's like trying to hold up some kind of value that you are not sure if you even believe in yourself anymore. Oh my gosh, talk about values. It's like, yeah, this could be you. Man, this is the Eight of Swords. Yeah. So what to do with your thinking and your mind? This is a lot about you trying to blind yourselves by maybe trying to follow in somebody else's footsteps. Maybe a family member, a friend, a celebrity for some of you. But really, even though you don't believe in it, so because you see the cracks on his face and on his arms, like, deep down within yourself, you know you shouldn't be doing this. You know it's not the right path for you. But you're just maybe scared because four is all about stability. Maybe you're just scared that you don't know where you'll be going. But really, even if you have all these planned out for yourself, you still don't really know where you're going because you're just leading yourself further away from where you need to be. From where you want, really want to be, where your heart really desires you to be. See, this person's wearing green and it's all about the heart chakra, right? So it's very much about you embodying your heart, what your heart wants you to do, doing what your heart wants you to do. You might not be willing to listen to this but I'm just going to tell you somebody needs to tell you right because I love you okay so this is the red or the sacral chakra that maybe also I'm hearing that for some of you you are supposed to follow your own passions because the sacral chakra deals with security stability you might be worried about losing a sense of stability when actually in your mind you're not very stable at all okay so yeah, this is kind of an indecision feel. So two of swords, the new moon energy. Also, new moon in Pisces is coming around. And make sure. Also, I'm doing this on the 19th, so the new moon is like 23rd, I think. So yeah, new moon in Pisces. Pisces is all about creativity, artistic, artisticality. <laughs> is that even a word? Um, what else is it about? So drawing, painting, calligraphy. I'm also hearing like for some of you dancing, like um, sword dancing, sword fighting, that kind of creativity. That's a really cool, there's actually like groups where they fight with real swords and hold performances, so it's really cool, but they get injured a lot. Maybe that's something you're interested in, like fencing even. I did fencing for a bit, yeah. I scared this guy because I suddenly started attacking him really annoyingly because he was very annoying. Yeah, I only attack people who I find annoying when I did fencing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. So, because Pisces is, after all, water sign, and this is like kind of dried out water, especially with the Pisces in New Moon in Pisces. It's about new beginnings, new creative endeavors. So, so what about maybe embarking on this journey? What a ship. Or maybe like through connecting with your emotions. So, I hear a lot about the Pisces being more like an ecosystem, more like, so changing again about how you view things, your system of doing things, which you've been trying so hard to uphold, which really has been making you dry out emotionally because you don't believe in it. And with this new moon in Pisces, you would really nail it. Yeah. So... Basically, you might also be feeling that because Pisces also deals with illusions, you might feel that because they're all blindfolded, you might be feeling like the illusion is presenting itself to you as a reality, and then you're questioning this reality and recognizing your own illusions, something like that. It's a very paradoxical feeling, which is what Neptune is about. The ruler of the ruler of Pisces. Also, this Ace of Wands. What I was talking about with the passion. What does she looks like a wand? Hey, yeah. It's about following your passions, your creativity, your spirituality. Also, I'm hearing that maybe for some of you, it's about 
being very logical and that you want to pursue some kind of spirituality when you're wondering whether it's practical or not but whether it is practical or not I mean I think it's practical but still it is up to you to put things into use okay with the Capricorn energy it is very much about I use I know how to use my talents I know how to use what I have I know how to use any kind of resource to maximize my profit I have abundance because I have because I know how to use what I have the Capricorn energy why is it coming through eh? okay he has horns maybe that's why this so Capricorn rules earth this is earth an earth card this is a fire card hmm. very cool yeah, so this again ties with this. The two cards. And so this person always reminds me of a nun. So yeah, maybe some kind of spiritual journey you want to take, but you're not sure. Basically, the universe just wants you to know, just take this, take this wand and go with it. So the rods are also mostly about travel, going on adventures, following your inner passion, your desire to do whatever the fuck you want. Oh no, I swore again. Maybe it gets demonetized along the way. So yeah, this book. This book to me, this book always reminds me about the revelation in the Bible because of the ram. Like there's this passage about this ram having, I don't know, three eyes, like, I don't know, two tongues, or six legs, something like that. And the ram also. Oh. I'm hearing a lot of resistance from you wanting to go on this spiritual journey following your passion but really this ram energy of capricorn is coming again also ram energy aries very much tied to the um what's it called maybe you have saturn in aries so saturn is all about discipline and restricting yourself from doing aries things which is about following your impulses so like here yeah, Oh, what was I going to say? But Aries is very much tied to the Wands card. Because Aries are very impulsive. And amazing like that. So this is this. So this is very much about you being worried about losing your sense of stability. What number is this? 35. Number 8. 8 again. like it is going on for eternity. When you just like... Just keep thinking about whether you should go on this journey. And the universe wants you to know. So the way to become friends with the warriors, obviously, is to just go along with your impulses. And to cast away this, I don't know, protective armor. This is what it's about. So it's like change. About stripping yourself bare, I guess. Trying to separate your spirituality and logic. That's what I'm hearing. So that's what actually I did. I just like... Because I am a very logical person, but also because I'm very curious about things, and I keep an open mind. So it's about zero is about keeping an open mind. The bowl is best. The bowl is most useful when empty. Capricorn energy again. It's about keeping an open mind, and with an open mind, there is an endless amount of possibilities. And also, for me, logic is very much about just like seeing whether what other people are telling you is accurate or not. That kind of thing. So for you, it is very logical. Also, I'm seeing that you're stepping into your emotions with the water. The water here. Instead of drying it out by pursuing some things that you don't believe in. Um, also, I'm getting the sense that by looking into your own mirror, your own reflection on the water, you can kind of really understand who you are. So Pisces is very much about mirroring the surface of the water to me. So casting away your own protective armor, your your desire for security, but also your desire to be always logical, always right. And I think the universe wants you to know that with by chasing your passions, passions, there's no such thing as a wrong or right passion. Whoa. I feel like you really want to just like not go with it. Wait. very much about also this does remind me of the home card as well and this one is also about dwelling within or like a lot of root chakra healing is needed I guess so 
there's a lot of root chakra healing meditation music things on youtube you can listen to and also so what about finding your own confidence within the stability you have hey that kind of sounds random i know but so your intuition wants to connect with you In the sense that you really need to go into yourself. You really need to go into what actually, question what actually makes you feel, feel comfortable. Maybe those things can be found even in the slightest layer of where you are going. So, I'll just say, I, I'm seeing the story about this guy. It's an ancient Chinese story about this guy who holds up a leaf thinking that it can make him feel invisible and that is also like the quick invisibility here and it's like which is also so he holds up this leaf and starts like stealing stuff but people can see him and the reason why he believed it could like shield him was because somebody was very annoyed because he kept asking people if he can be seen or not so his wife one day told him that, no, I can't see you anymore. And so he was like, oh yeah, this leaf is the one. So he started going around doing things that he wanted to do, but he never did because people could see him. And so maybe you want to do something that people you think other people will judge you. So you might want to do those things by keeping it private. So that might be a way for you to do these things, to follow your passion. Yeah. But also, I'm getting the sense that really your friends, your family, look, some of them might really not care about what you're doing. I mean, but if this is against the law, maybe just, I don't know. So there has to be a reason why you want to do this. And also it's about, so like taking off the cloak, taking off your protective armor and seeing, and knowing that you are safe without having to protect yourself. Because the universe has your back as well. I have your back, in, in a way. I'm here, if you need me, if you need to talk to me, it's like, hit me up. Future you on Instagram, or Twitter, or Telegram, Telegram is preferred. Uh, I'm always getting the sense that you need to go into like the cave of yourself. Okay, let's just look at this card. So this is a lot about being in the moment. Riding the cosmic wave, yeah, the universe just wants you to go after your passions. Even though it is going around your head a lot and a lot and a lot, this passion is just being blown around by your your logic. So your logic, your mind is like the wind, the air, and the passion is like the fire, it's just getting blown around. So it is only your emotions that can regulate your passion. Because your emotions are water and your passion is fire. It's about connecting with the divine and just going with it. So whatever you want to do, just fucking do it. Okay? Oh my gosh, I'm swearing again. I'm doing to monitor. Anyway. Yeah. If you have any other problems, make sure. Like, if you want to. Like, comment or message me. And yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Or you can, like, listen to other tarot card readers on youtube to get you more clarification of course i'm pretty sure my other tarot card reads can help you as well um yeah also instagram twitter if you want to follow me go ahead i love you i'm definitely sure that you can pull through this like i tend to overthink as well a lot but also meditation helps but yeah so up to number four whoa whoa body and mind 11. That is a very angelic number I hear. I thought... I'm getting the sense that you are somebody who is very connected. Okay, let me just not look at this. Otherwise it just gets... It's like in the... Caught of my eye and kind of distracts me. I'm getting the sense that you are somebody very connected. And you have a lot of dragon energy, which means that you are very ambitious. And you're also kind of protective of what you have. So, so body mind, it's very important to know that how you think will also influence your body. So if you are stressed, obviously, here's a very well-known example, if you are stressed, 
you can feel like even like your back aching, your stomach hurting, your head hurting, something like that. And also, it also works the other way as well. If you eat healthily, it will help you think more clearly. Whereas if you eat junk food, it will probably not really do much for you. If anything good at all will come up eating junk food. <laughs> I know someone who loves eating junk food. But yeah, I also love eating healthy food. Getting, uh, strangely, a lot of Neptunian energy as well. And also, make sure this is like the 90th when I'm filming this. Pisces new moon is coming up. And so, Pisces is a lot about illusions and reflections, about how your mind reflects your body, your body reflects your mind. So, if you exercise regularly, even <laughs> even in a soul with a quote, a healthy soul dwells within a healthy mind and a healthy body. And to keep a healthy body, of course, we have to drink plenty of water, sleep a lot, just not a lot, but steep enough, eat healthily, exercise, which is very important. Also, in exercise, it is somewhat in a form of meditation, especially if you exercise in nature. It really helps you cleanse out what your mind has been thinking about over and over if you have been doing that. I wonder that so always feels like some of you might have been doing that. Um, what else? Of course, if you think healthy thoughts as well, it will also help you to eat healthily. So if you think, I don't like healthy foods, that is obviously not going to help you eat healthy. But if you say, I love my greens, and I will eat my greens with pleasure, of course you would love to eat your greens. Yeah? And I love salad, especially ones with beans in it. Okay, that one's kind of, ooh, some kind of heartbreak. And also, this is very much to me a card connecting with the water signs and the. This is to me a lot about thinking and emotions. It's like, yes, Pisces is a water sign. Can you sense you might be an air sign or a water sign? Oh, Leo is Sagittarius. Why am I suddenly saying this anyway? This is a lot about. So, yeah, mind, body, soul. That is what I'm hearing. So, it is. The mind, body, and soul is also very critical to how you love yourself. If you want to love yourself, it is very important for us to eat healthily, of course. To exercise and do all that stuff, great stuff for our body, meditate, think good thoughts of ourselves and of others. I love you. Get it. And also, with the soul, being careful about who you're around and how their energies can Im influence you and how their actions can influence you. So if you're around people who, I don't know, eat dirt, and you might be influenced to eat dirt as well. And that might be a metaphor to people who talk shit about others. And so, like some people, especially if you're a water sign, if you're very intuitive, you might end up doing that. And it's not good for you. You will just end up attracting more people like that and so to love yourself is to remove yourself from those people and by removing yourself from those people you can easily start thinking more positively about other people and about yourself because nobody's really always criticizing other people and when people when you always hear other people criticizing about other people start wondering about how they will criticize you and that's how i think as well when i'm around those kinds of people that's why i don't like being around those people also for a want that is where I kind of feel this spirituality. Also, with this, I got the sense that you're very spiritually connected. And so the universe would like you to know that to get this sense of stability, it is very important for you to connect with the higher powers, higher self. Just to be very connected to the universe I'm hearing. And because the yellow, the yellow chakra, the solar plexus chakra, it is very much part of your confidence and self belief, self confidence. Because you are somebody who is who is meant to be very spiritually connected, and that is part of who you are. So that will give you a good sense of who you are meant to be. And I got this from like the Hermit card as well. So the Hermit is somebody who just simply weaves the void. He channels what the universe wants him to do. And also. What I'm getting from this is that you will be able to find people who who are like you, who will celebrate your wins with you instead of feeling jealous about what you've done. And so those people, because through connecting with spiritual 
your spiritual nature, just being, just being with nature even, just being with people who also love nature, they will like hold you up more than people who will stab you because they stab other people in the back and they probably stab you in the back too. I'm sorry to tell you that. And I feel like you're kind of shook about what I said. <laughs> Maybe it's just that also since you're somebody very balanced, very, maybe very balanced in that way or else somebody very might be like stopping you from wanting to pursue this thing so I'm also getting the sense that these people might be somebody who you feel very connected with and with like very like um bound with with the ring thing and also it might be like there might be a reflection of something within you so like a twin flame thing and also because Pisces is a lot about reflections illusions like making you see what you want to see like the charm in the art of seduction, they just, they just reflect what you want to see. So maybe those people are just reflecting what you want to see, or like, or what you don't want to see about yourself. And by understanding that that is, if you have that, that kind of part of you within yourself, for some reason I find it is kind of hard to say. It might be something very hard for you to admit that you are somewhat like them. And because you want to be different from them, and you can be different from them, everybody it's not meant to be some kind of backstabber. We are meant to be humans who support and love each other because we are spiritually connected with each other. We are spiritually all part of this universe. And because we have a universe within us and the universe we are part of, they are within our universe. I mean, if that makes sense to you, but really we are very connected to each other. I'm hearing like the chattering of birds. So I'm guessing that they might be very chatty, very gossipy, but there are also people out there who want to talk about good things, who want to talk about, who want to celebrate the good things. This is also a lot about coming home victorious. So a lot of celebrations. Just finding your true home is what will happen for you. So basically this is about beauty. It is about knowing that you are beautiful. It's a lot about knowing that you are beautiful, coming to love yourself. By like looking after yourself. And also this is the lovers card. Also keeping things simple. Like love doesn't have to be rainbow in colour. It can be just a grey itself. <laughs> it still reminds me of like the gay flag and the straight flag. <laughs> um so yeah, and it's a lot about ripples of love as well. About you loving yourself and by you loving yourself and you knowing who you want to surround yourself with, you can attract the right people. The right person, the right soulmate, the soulmate, the one you want to spend your life with. So that is very important for you to come to love yourself, to come to know that you don't have to deal with people who stab your heart. To know that you care about your heart. You can protect yourself, man, woman, other, sibling. I love you, okay? <laughs> so yeah, that's what I have for you. And I can get the sense that you are a very strong person. You can definitely go through this. You can go through like a roaring wind, okay, like the roaring fire. You can cut through their bullshit. And you know what's up, okay? You know what's up. You can definitely get to your next phase of life, your next dimension if you want. And also, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I love you. And also, if you like, follow me on Instagram, Twitter. I don't know, have mine as well. And if you want, to hit me up somewhere talk about things you want. Yeah, that's the end of my reading for today. I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching this. Also, thank you for being number four. All of us. Good. I love you very much. Subscribe if you haven't. I love you. If you like.